Congratulations. We'll start with Pat Hooper, uh, who will tell us about flat surf. Okay. Pat? Okay, so, right. So maybe before I get started, so, so flat surf is a, it's a program that, that studies flat surfaces, and Tucson and I mostly wrote it. Um, but we, we welcome help, actually. If anybody wants to help and contribute, it would be great. There's a lot of problems, and we don't address all the problems yet. Um, anyway, so, so if you wanted to follow along and be able to see the deck as you go through, you can go to my, my website, which is here. And if you scroll, so this, this docs thing has my papers and also some slides. And if you scroll down, way down to find slides, you can click on, um, you can click on, I guess what I recommend clicking on is this, um, it says web page under here. So which is just a wave, it's a web page printout of the Sage Network. And then, so if you have your computer app, you can follow along. And, and this is the Sage, this is the Sage Notebook I'll be going through. Although, it's just a printout. Okay. Okay. So, so, so let me tell you what Flat Surf does. Um, I briefly put up, so I only have 15 minutes, so this is all going to be very quick. Um, so, so you have to, so in order to run Flat Surf, you have to have Sage, and then there's installation. If you have Sage, you can sort of quickly install Flat Surf by running this command, hopefully. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't install it that way, so I don't know. <laughs> can't confirm it works. Um, okay, so, so flat surf has built into it a bunch of sort of famous flat surfaces. So one example, oh, see this, the graphics are going to show you. So, so one example is the double pentagon. And so, so I just constructed the double pentagon for you. And actually, so this is a translation service, and the way it's labeled, the polygons are labeled by numbers, and then the edges are glued by the polygon they're labeled to. And then in this case, this completely determines the surface, because you have to glue parallel sides to parallel sides. So like this edge over here is glued up to this edge up here. Sorry, though. I might have to fiddle around with the, um, the size of this. Okay. So anyway, so... So I thought I'd demonstrate, so I'm just basically going to quickly demonstrate some features of the program, because I don't think I have much time to sort of teach you how to use it. Uh, but you can always look at the, the source to see how it works. So what I just did is I constructed a matrix. So here's a, so here's a two by two matrix. It's a parabolic matrix. And you can take your surface and you can apply the, you can apply the matrix to it. So it's just, just M times the, the surface. And so if you hit the matrix, hit the surface with that, you get, you get this surface here, which has been stretched out according to the matrix. And, uh, and then again, this thing has your parallel sides glued to parallel sides. So like this edge over here is again glued to this edge over here. And it's still, it's a genus two surface. And so it turns out, so, so this, this thing, so this surface is actually a translation equivalent to the surface that we first drew. So what that means is that you could cut this up into triangles, then you could cut it on the diagonal and rearrange it. And the program knows how to do this. So in fact, there's the surface, the program has some sort of canonicalization operation. So, okay. Well, so what you can do first is you can compute this del and a decomposition. So, so this thing, I took that original service and I computed this del and a decomposition. Um, and then this is what you get. So del and a decomposition means you sort of inflate maximal circles and then take the, take the convex hull of those maximal circles wherever, sorry, the convex, the, the maximal circle will touch some cone singularities, which are basically the vertices in this picture. And you take a convex hull of those, and then you do a cell decomposition of the, the surface. Yeah. Is it possible to see the triangles? You've hidden the triangles in the delamate. Oh yeah, no, yeah. Um, well, <laughs> well, so here, so there's, there's no delamate triangle. So this is a delamate decomposition because the delamate comp decomposition is canonical. Um, oh, this is a in this case. Yeah. What, so, but, you, but I can sort of, I can tweak this. But it is. It, yeah. Let, let me just show you what would happen if. So what you could do is you could, yeah, maybe I change my matrix by a little bit, like. So instead of using this matrix, I could use, I don't know, I could put, well, I put two here. And that's not going to be an automorphism of the surface. And now, now I get this other surface. And then when I compute the del and a decomposition, it'll actually be a triangulation. Sorry, a bit low. Most likely it's a triangulation. Okay. Yeah, so there's, there's a del and a triangulation. Yeah, so, okay, anyway. Um, yeah, so it, I can't just sort of tell you exactly what the thing's doing. You probably know it's not. Okay, so and then you can check to see, oh no, so now it's gonna fail. Okay, so, <laughs> okay, so now my, my new surface is this, this other guy, which is not a translation equivalent to the other. But if I had run it before, I would have said true. 
So we can actually check to see if an element is in the feature group. So, so S, I had to canon I canonicalize S above. And then now if I can canonicalize double S, then if they were really the same translation of covalent surfaces, they had the same canonicalization. You can check to see if they're equal. And so then you can prove that an element is in the feature group. Okay. Yeah, so another thing this thing does is you can draw G at SX. So I don't know. So what I just defined is I define a tangent vector on, on the surface, and then I flow that vector for a bit. And then you can Yeah, so I just thought I should see. Okay, here. Okay, oh I see. So so what I just did was I defined a vector sitting right here, and then I used that vector to find a trajectory. And then you can flow the trajectory if you want. So, <coughs> and then I plotted it. So here's a, okay, so here's a trajectory. Actually, you can tell. So this thing, it's going to be, a, it's a closed trajectory. And actually, the program can tell that it, that it closes up. I think if you, uh, you know, I printed out, it's, so it's closed. Um, it has combinatorial length 40, which means that it intersects 40 you know, polygons counting multiplicity. And um, and that's, that's the, so here's the trajectory. And, yeah, so, I don't know. So that, that's one thing you can do that I find useful. So you can plot trajectories. Um, I should have to say, like, so, so this is a translation service. This, this program handles much more general things. So it handles half translation services as well. It also handles cone, Euclidean cone surfaces. It handles um, similarity surfaces. Do you know what, what those are? So in sort of anything in between, basically. So you can draw trajectories. So some things you can't do, like it doesn't make sense to have an affine action on it, including cone surface. Okay. Um, oh yeah, so one thing I added recently, which I thought people might like to see, is, and this is from talking to my colleague David Oluchino. So he is interested in, in polyhedra, and what's happening in polyhedra. And I think other people in the community are also interested in that. Um, so what you can do is, well, Sage has built in some, po some polyhedra class. And yeah, so here's a, yeah, so this is a polyhedron that's built into Sage already. And I guess with, with the magic of Jupyter Notebook, you can rotate it around. Or actually, I guess this is a JS model. So you can rotate it around. So there's a dodecahedron. And the surface of this dodecahedron is a Euclidean cone surface. And so our program can extract that Euclidean cone surface and interpret it in, you know, in the way we do. Um, and then you can, oh, sorry. So, so here's so our here's our program. So our program can read any you can feed it any any polyhedron and it'll it'll interpret it as a cone surface and here's what you get with the um, So and then you can do the same sort of thing with it. So is there a way to turn on edge identifications? Like yes, to be yeah, there's options to the plot command. Okay. Yeah. So I felt like in this case like somehow you guys could figure it out. <laughs> Yeah, in fact, there's, there's various options you can put to say how it's um, Yeah, so, so here's a, I think this is a similar trajectory. So plotted, I think it made, it's the same trajectory, but now it's plotted on, on the dome. <coughs> so you start in the same place and travel in the same direction. And it gets to be eight times as long. Wait, wait, but it should never run out of, shouldn't it be kind of filling up irrational? Oh, no, this is a, this is a rational, I mean, this is a, yeah, this is a rational, rational trajectory. Okay. I mean, it's, it's periodic on them. Yeah, so it's in the, actually, there's a theorem that says, like, if, you know, if, if this vector is in the field, in a sense, then you can tell it's going to close up. This is, I guess that's due to each. Okay. And that's something very special about talking about Um And, yeah, so our program also, oh, this is not working so well. Yeah, so our program can also sort of plot, um, plot the trajectory of three space. It's not working so well. Yeah, I think there's some issue. But when it plots the trajectory, it, it plots it as a union of um, cylinders. And I guess sometimes, well, I don't know how well our JavaScript interpreter. Actually, there's several viewers in Sage. I don't have time to fill it in. There's several viewers in Sage, and so some will probably do a better job drawing it than others. Um, OK. Oh, here's a longer one. Actually, let me skip. There, there's a longer one. Um, yeah, well, Okay. Oh yeah. So one thing I, I thought I'd say is, so for people that are more interested in translation services, one thing our program does is, 
it, it now you can do relative period deformations. So you can do a, what this means is so here's a, a huge decagon, and the decagon has two singularities. And one thing you can do is you can move one singularity relative to the other one. So you can just sort of think of, yeah, so if you take one of the, actually every other vertex here is, is, is say, a white singularity. And you can take all the white singularities and move them in the same direction. And this will have the property that you know, preserves parallelness of the edges you're gluing together. And so you get a deformation in space, I mean, a de deformation of the surface. Um, and, and, the, and so our program can do that. Although, yeah, one of the problems I want to suggest is sort of improving. Um, I'll say that later. So, so you have to triangulate it first. Okay, it's a little clunky right now. Um, so, here's, so a singularity is really an equivalence class of vertices, which, yeah, so here's a, yeah, anyway, so here's a, here's a small rel deformation. What I did is I took, there was this flat edge down here, and I took this guy and moved it up here a little bit. And here's, so here's a small rel deformation. And then this is the del and decomposition. And so it's not quite, it doesn't quite look like the decagon, but I think there's some, I, this triangle for some reason got plotted over there. We moved it up here. Mm -hmm. it was this, the, like the this is L2 domain? Uh, yes. Yes, yes, L2 domain. I don't know, do we support L1? I mean, L infinity domain? Yeah, yeah. almost support L infinity Yeah, okay. Good. So we might support L infinity domain. Um, okay, so here's a larger deformation. So I, I moved in the same direction for a very long time. And then did the del and a, and this is what you get. Anyway, so, so you can do one dimensional rel deformations. So it'd be nice to be able to, I mean, somehow you can think of like deforming in the space of surfaces by taking this taking a point, instead of moving it in a straight line, which is what our program does, you can sort of move it in any path you want. And it'd be nice to sort of be able to actually do that. And we're not at that point yet. Um, um, oh, so I thought I'd finish, see, okay, I still have three minutes. Um, so I thought I'd finish by, by demonstrating a theorem of my, of my an undergraduate student I'm working with, which is really cute. So um, it sort of shows you. So so I'm so actually there's some stuff not built into Sage into the flat surf yet, but I'm using it. And then basically I just there was a lot of commands I just ran, but basically it created a surface. And scroll. Yeah. Oh, here we go. So here's. Yeah, so here's, this, here's what he's been studying. So you, there's this, yeah, this, this surface is built out of squares, and it's just like a sort of like an infinite staircase. And you should think of it as infinite. It's a um, cubert surface. Yeah, it's a cubert. Yeah, so my student says, I never played cubert, so I don't, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how much a cubert does. It also shows up in my, it's an optical illusion. You can't tell if the cubert's popping out or it shouldn't be in on that. So it's famous from that. Um, but so he's been studying geodesic flow on this thing. And in particular, he's an undergraduate, so he's studying, thinking mostly about rational trajectories. So if you, a rational trajectory is just one that, if you measure it in the natural coordinates of the square, it's rational. And, um, yeah, so his theorem is that if, if that rational number is odd over odd, then it closes up. And if it's not odd over odd, then it doesn't. Matter. So, so I thought I'd just, and I can draw you some pictures of trajectories. So here's a, yeah, so here's a, so this is a slope one trajectory measured in the space, and that thing closes up. So, so you get a, it's like a, it's a, you know, twelve gon somehow, but it's not, it's not flat. <coughs> and and save you can, you know, you can tweak and play around with it. Um, and here's, so here's a, so five fourths is not out of rod, so this thing won't close up. Yeah, so here's a. So it's, it's the infinite version modulo sub symmetry? So <coughs> no, it's the infinite thing. <coughs> it's the infinite thing. I'm just, so I somehow have it set up. It gets to me two million square. So I just have it set up. To, oh, see, so that is some issues with plotting. Um, but I just have it to, so any, any so I, it's just plotting part of a trajectory now. So this is a not a periodic trajectory, but it's what we call drift periodic. It actually like sort of snakes up the stairs like this periodically. And then here's one one more. And then, um, let's see this one. So eleven ninths is my favorite. <laughs> see, so here's so tachyon is a different viewer. I guess there's enough stuff sitting around this picture that it's that it's, it's hard to 
Okay, so you can't interact with this viewer, but this is some this is some trajectory. And I guess the, I think it's this, the reason why I like this one is it's the smallest one that crosses itself. But anyway, so eleven nights also gives you a periodic trajectory. I think actually I don't know I haven't gotten my student to prove it yet, but I think it should be provable that all the trajectories you get are sort of six-fold rotationally symmetric. And I think my student will pull it through that by the end. Actually, he still hasn't finished writing this. Um, okay, so that that's a demonstration of that stuff. Do you guys have any questions? Yeah, other questions for, for Pat? What's the overlap with uh, the mechanics <coughs> program? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, there's probably some. I mean, I think he's moved in sort of a slightly different direction. Vincent, do you know more about what Ronan's program does? It was mostly intended for Genesis 2 services, I guess. Um, as far as I know. I mean, I, th I know one thing his, his does, or drives doesn't do, is it computes speech groups. Which we haven't set ours up yet to do. In fact, I, this is actually another thing that would be nice. Sage, I don't think, unfortunately, like, it's very easy to compute a beach group in some sense, but I don't think Sage has built into it anything that will sort of compute like a fundamental domain for an um, action on the hydraulic plane. <coughs> that would be nice to have, and then I would just plug into that and this code would be sort of fairly quick to compute beach groups if you knew what, if you knew you had a fairly simple beach group. Uh, other questions for Pat? What's the plan going forward? What do you want to do? Well, okay, I alluded to this, these RHEL deformations. I mean, essentially, it's just developing in directions that our research is going. And unfortunately, like, that's not like a, like, so we're not trying to create like a general package just to, you know, to handle all flat services. But one thing we're hoping to do is like recruit more people in the flat service community to sort of work on it, and then, then maybe we could be broader. Um, yeah, I don't think I don't think it's realistic for Vincent. I just sort of create something that's going to handle everything. Like anybody in flat service can be interested in doing. Yeah, last time we met with uh, Mark Bell, we did some interface with Flipper. Oh, okay. so we can okay. go back and forth with uh, Flipper. Right? Oh yeah, so yeah, if I had more time, I would demonstrate that. Yeah, so you can so you can use Mark Bell's Flipper to produce a pseudo NASA, and then his, it also computes the flat service structure of pseudo NASA. We can import that and work with that. So that's something. That we any other questions or comments? All right, well, let's thank Pat.